one of the things we've all met is the accusation that we are strident or um, arrogant or, or vitriolic or shrill. Uh, what do we think about that? Yeah, well, um, I'm amused by it because I went out of my way in my book to address reasonable religious people, and I, I test flew the draft with with groups of students who were who were deeply religious, and indeed the first draft uh, uh, incurred some real anguish, and so I made adjustments and made adjustments, and it didn't do any good in the end because I still got hammered for uh, for being for being rude and aggressive, and I came to realize that. It, it, it's a no-win situation. It's it's a uh, it's a mug's game. The religions have have contrived to make it impossible to disagree with them critically mm. without being rude. Without being rude, we, you know, they 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 sort of play the hurt feelings card at every opportunity, and you you're faced with the choice of, well, am I going to be rude, or am I going to Say articulate this yeah. criticism. Yeah. I mean, am I going to articulate it, or am I, am I just going to button my lip? And, and right. Well, that's what it is to trespass a taboo. I think we're we're all no, encountering no. the fact that that religion is is held off the table of rational no. criticism in in some kind of formal way, even by we're discovering our fellow secularists no. and our fellow atheists. You know, just leave people to their own superstition even if it's yep. uh, abject and causing harm, I don't look too closely at it. Now that, that was of course the, the point of the title of my book, is there is this spell and we've got to break it. But if the charge of um, mm. offensiveness in general is to be allowed in public discourse, then without self-pity I think we should say that we too can be offended and insulted. I mean, I, I'm not just uh, in disagreement when someone like Tariq Ramadan mm. accepted now the high tables of Oxford University as a spokesman says the most he'll demand when it comes to the stoning of women is a moratorium on it. I find that profoundly much more than annoying. Right. Yeah. Um, insulting, it, insulting it, not only insulting, but actually threatening. But you're not offended. Um, this is, I, you don't take any, I don't see you taking things personally. You're alarmed by the, the liabilities of certain ways of thinking, as in Ramadan's yes. case. But, but he would say, or people like him would say, that if I doubt the historicity of the Prophet Muhammad, I've injured them in their deepest feelings. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I am, in fact, I think all people ought to be offended, at least in their deepest integrity, by, say, the religious proposition that without a supernatural celestial dictatorship, we wouldn't know right from wrong. That we only no. we only well, live by. But are you really offended by, by that? Doesn't it just seem wrong? No, to I, you? no. I say only, Sam, that if if the um, offensiveness uh, charge is to be allowed in general and arbitrated by the media, then I think we're entitled to claim that much without being self-pitying or representing ourselves yeah, as an oppressed minority, right. which I think is an, op no, an opposite no. danger. I, I would no. admit. I'd, I'd like to add also that um, that I agree with Daniel that there's no way in which the charge. Uh, against us can be completely avoided because what we say does offend the core, the very core of any serious religious person at any rate. If we, if we deny the divinity of Jesus, for example, that many people will be terrifically shocked and possibly hurt. It's just too bad. I'm fascinated by the contrast between the amount of offense that's taken by religion and the amount of offense that people take against really anything else, like your artistic taste, your taste in music, mm -hmm. your taste in art, uh, your politics. You mm -hmm. can be not exactly as rude as you like, we're going to be far, far more rude about such things. And I'd quite like to try to quantify that, to actually do <laughs> research about it, yeah. actually it test yeah. people with, with statements about their favorite football team or their yeah. favorite piece of music or something, yeah. and see how far you can go before they take offense, compared to, is there anything else, apart from, say, how ugly your face is, yeah. Um, yeah. that gives right. such... Or your husband's or wife's or girlfriend's oh, yeah, yeah, or partner's yeah, yeah, face. Yeah, yes. Well, yeah. As, uh, it's interesting you say that. I, I regularly debate with the terrible man called John Donahue of the um, Catholic Defense League. And he actually is righteously upset by certain trends in modern art, um, right. which tend to draw attention to themselves by blasphemy. Well, For example, Piss Serrano's Christ, yeah. Serrano's yes. Christ, or yes. the elephant dying on the Virgin. And, so. and indeed, I, th I think it's quite important that we share uh, with Sophocles and other pre-monotheists a, a revulsion to desecration or to profanity, that we, we don't want to see um, churches uh, desecrated or, mm. no, or uh, not. religious icons yeah. uh, trashed and so forth. Yes. We, 
we share an admiration for at least some of the aesthetic achievements of religion. Right. I, I think this, this whole notion of, I think our criticism is, is actually more barbed than that in the sense that we're not, we are offending people, but we're also telling them that they're wrong to be offended. I mean, this is, it, yes. it, yeah. physicists don't, <laughs> aren't offended when their, when their view of, of physics is disproved or challenged. I mean, this is just not the way uh, rational minds operate yeah. when they're really trying to get at what's true in the world. And religions purport to be representing reality, and yet there's this peevish and, and tribal and ultimately dangerous reflexive response to having these ideas challenged. I think we're, we're pointing to the, the total liability of that. Well, uh, and two, there's no polite way to say to somebody, you've wasted your do, life. Do you realize <laughs> you've wasted your life? Um, do you realize that you've just devoted all your, your efforts and all your goods to the, uh, the, uh, the uh, a glorification of something which is just a myth? Uh, or have you ever considered, the e even if you say, have you even considered the possibility that maybe you've wasted your life on this? There's no, there's no inoffensive way of saying it, yeah. but we do have to say it because they should jolly well consider it. Same as we do about our own lives. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Dan Barker's making a collection of clergymen who've lost their faith, but don't dare say so because it's their only living. It's the only thing they know yeah. what to do. I've and, heard and from he, one of them at least. Have you? Yeah. Yes. I used to have this when I was younger in arguments with the members of the Communist Party. They, they sort of knew that it was all up with the Soviet Union. Mm. <laughs> Many of them had suffered a lot and mm. sacrificed a great deal and struggled you know, manfully to keep what they thought was the great ideal alive. They, they, their mainspring had broken, but they couldn't, they couldn't give it mm. up because it would involve a similar concession. Right. But yeah, that right. certainly, I mean, if anyone said to me, how could you say that to them about the Soviet Union? Didn't you know you were going to really make them cry and hurt their feelings? And I said, don't be ridiculous. Don't be absurd. But it's, 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 I find it. In many cases, almost an exactly analogous argument. When, when people tell me I'm being rude and, and vicious and uh, terribly aggressive in a way that I should, I'd say, well, if, if I were saying these things about um, the, the pharmaceutical industry or the oil interests, yeah. uh, would it be rude? Would it be off limits? No. Of course it wouldn't. Right. Well, I want religion to be treated just the way we treat the pharmaceuticals and, and the oil industry. I'm not against pharmaceutical companies. I'm against some of the things they do, but I just want to put religions on the same page with in, them. Including denying them tax exemption. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And or in the English case, uh, state subsidy. I'm curious how religion acquired this charmed status that it has mm -hmm. compared to any of these other things. I mean, somehow we've all bought into it, whether we're religious or not. And mm -hmm. s that some historical process has led to this immunization of religion against, well, this, this, hi this, this hyper of offense taking that, that religion is allowed to take. And what's particularly um, uh, uh, um, I, amusing to me, finally, at first it infuriated me, but now I'm amused, is they've managed to enlist legions of non religious people who take offense on their behalf. And how. In it fact, are, yes, the yeah. most vicious reviews of my book have been by people who are not themselves religious, but they're terribly afraid of hurting the feelings of the people that are right. religious, mm -hmm. and they, they chastise me worse than anybody exactly who's actually my experience. religious. Exactly my experience. <laughs> and I think, so one of you pointed out how condescending that view is. That yes, you, the, you, yes. The, it's as though, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's like the idea of penitentiaries. I mean, they're, they're, other people need them. You know, they, we right. must yes. keep these people. Yes safely in their midst. Yes. yes. Um, well, I, I think there's one answer to that question which, uh, which may illuminate a difference that, that, or at least a difference that I have with, with uh, uh, I think maybe all three of you. I, I, there's something about, I mean, I still use words like spiritual and mystical without furrowing my brow too much and I, I mean, to the consternation of many atheists. Um, I think there is a range of experience that is rare and that is only talked about without obvious qualms in religious discourse. And, and because it's only talked about in religious discourse, it is, it is just riddled with superstition and, and it's used to cash out various metaphysical schemes which it can't reasonably do. But clearly people have extraordinary experiences, whether they have them on LSD or they have them because they were in a, alone in a cave for a year or they have them because they just happen to have the neurology that is that is particularly labile, that, that allows for it. But people have 
self-transcending experiences and people mm -hmm. have the best day of their life where everything seemed, you know, they seemed at one with nature. Sure. And, for, and for that, it, it, because religion is, seems to be the only game in town in talking about those experiences and dignifying them, everyone, uh, that's one reason why I think it, it, it seems to be taboo to criticize it because you're talking about the most important moments in people's lives and trashing them, e at least from their view. Well, I don't have to agree with you, Sam, in order to say that you're, it's a very good thing you're saying that sort of thing, because it, it shows that, as you say, religion is not the only game in town when it comes to being yeah. spiritual. It's like it's a good idea to have somebody from, from the political right uh, who, is an, who is an atheist, because otherwise right. there's a confusion of, of, of values which, yeah. which doesn't help us, and it's, yeah. it's much better to, to have this diversity in, in other areas. I mean, I think I sort of do agree with you, uh, but even if I didn't, I think it was valuable to have that. Right, right. If one could make one change, and only one, mine would be to distinguish the numinous from the supernatural. Yes. Right. Um, you had a marvelous quotation from Francis Collins, the, the genome pioneer, who said, you know, while mountaineering one day, he was just yeah. overcome by the landscape. Mm -hmm. And then w went down to on his knees and accepted Jesus Christ, a complete non sequitur. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's never even yeah. been suggested yeah. that Jesus Christ created that landscape. Right. A, f a frozen waterfall in three yeah. streams. Three, three yes, parts. Which yeah. would yeah. the mind yeah. of the Trinity. Well, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're all triune in one way or another. Yeah. We're programmed for that. That's very clear. Um, the, the wouldn't, it wouldn't ever have been a four-headed God. Right. Um, <laughs> you know that from experience. Mm -hmm. But that, that would be an enormous distinction to make. And I think it would clear up a lot of people's confusion that, this, that, the, that what we have in our emotions, that the surplus value of our personalities, the bits that aren't particularly useful for our evolution, or that we can't prove are, but that do belong to us all the same, don't, don't belong to the supernatural and are not to be conscripted or annexed by any priesthood. Mm. Yes, it's, it's, it's a sad fact that people, in a sense, won't trust their own valuing of their numinous experiences. They think, it isn't really as good as it seems unless it's, unless it's from God, unless it's in some kind of a proof of religion. No, right. it's, it's just as wonderful as it seems. It's just as important. It is the best moment in your life. And it's the moment when you, you forget yourself and become better than you ever thought you could be in some way. And see in, in all humbleness the wonderfulness of, the, of nature. That's, that's it. And that's wonderful. But it doesn't add anything to say, golly, that has to have been given to me by somebody even more wonderful. It's well, been hijacked, hasn't it? By yeah, the way. It's, also, yes. it's also, I'm afraid, yeah. it's a, I think it's, yeah. a, I think it's a, a, a deformity or shortcoming in, in the human personality, frankly, because the religion keeps stressing how humble it is and how meek it is and how accepting and um, almost to the point of self-abnegation it is. But actually it makes extraordinarily arrogant claims for these right. moments. It I suddenly realized that the universe was all about me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and yeah. felt terrifically humble about it. Yeah. Come on. You know, we, have, we can laugh people out of that, I believe. Right. Yeah. Also, and, 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 and I think, and and I think we must. should. I am so tired of the, uh, uh, if only Professor Dennett had the humility to blah, blah, blah. Yes. Humility, <laughs> humility. And this from people of breathtaking arrogance. Yes. I think yeah. I, I shove one aside but, saying, yeah. just don't, don't mind me, I'm on an errand for God. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, this is a point. How modest is yeah. that? Yeah. This is the point I think we should return to this notion of the yeah. arrogance of science. Oh, because um, yeah. there, there, there is no discourse which enforces humility more rigorously. I mean, scientists, in my experience, are the, the first people to say they don't know. I mean, if you get, if yeah. you get, if you get a scientist to start talking mm -hmm. off his area of specialization, he immediately starts, he or she immediately starts hedging his bet, saying, you know, I'm, not, you know, I'm sure there's someone in the room who knows more about this than me, and, and of course, so, you know, all the data's not in. I mean, it's, it's, this, this is the, the, the mode of discourse in which we are most candid about the, the, the scope of our ignorance. Well, actually, a lot yeah. of academics uh, come up with that kind of false modesty. But I do know well, yeah, what you it, mean. Yes, it is. Many is the historian yeah. who says, no, I, right. I yield. It's just someone no, but any up. academic yeah. should do that. Any yes, they should. The, the yeah. thing about religious people is that they recite the Nicene Creed every week, which says precisely what they, they believe. There are three gods, not one. The Virgin Mary, um, Jesus died, went to the what is this, down for three days and then came up again. Yeah. In, yes. in precise detail. And yet they have the gall to accuse us of being overconfident. Yeah. And, yeah. and of... And and, of and, not knowing how, what it is to and, doubt. And I don't think 
many of them ever let themselves contemplate the question which I think scientists ask themselves all the time, what if I'm wrong? Yeah. What if I'm wrong? I mean, uh, it's just not part of their repertory. Actually, would you mind if I disagree with you about that? I mean, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of the uh, talk that makes religious people hard to, uh, not hard to beat, but hard to argue with, is precisely that they'll say they're in a permanent crisis of faith. There is indeed a prayer, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Graham Greene right. says the great thing about being a Catholic was that it was a challenge to his unbelief. A lot of people live by keeping two sets of books. In fact, yes. it's my impression. Yeah, that's the risk. In my impression, it's my impression in fact, that a, a majority of the people I know who call themselves believers or people of faith do that all the time. I wouldn't say it was schizophrenia. That would be, that would be rude. Mm. But, but so they, they're quite aware of the implausibility of what they say. They, they don't act on it when they go to the doctor or when they travel or anything of right, this kind. Right. But in some sense, they couldn't be without it. But they're, they're quite respectful of the idea of doubt. In fact, they make a... They try and build it in when they can. Well, that's interesting then. And so when they are reciting the creed with its, with its total sort of apparent conviction, is this a, this a kind of mantra which is forcing themselves to overcome doubt by saying, yes, I do believe, I do believe, I do yeah. believe, uh, because sure, really and, I and, don't. And, and, yeah. and, and, and of course, like, the, yeah. others, like the, the secular counterparts, they're glad other people believe it. It's an, aff it's an affirmation they wouldn't yes. want other people yes. not to be making. Well, yes. also there's this, there's this curious bootstrapping move, which I, I tried to point out in this, in this recent On Faith piece, this, this idea that you start with the premise that belief without evidence is especially noble. I mean, this is the doctrine of, of faith. This is the, you know, the parable of Doubting Thomas. And so you start with that, and then you add this notion, which has come to me through various debates, that, that the, the fact that people can believe without evidence is itself a subtle form of evidence. I mean, we're kind of wired. To, actually, Francis Collins, you mentioned, mm. brings this up in his book. We're, we're, the fact that we have this intuition of God is itself some subtle form of evidence. And this is a kind of kindling phenomenon where if, once you say yeah, yeah. it's good to start without evidence, the fact that you can is a subtle form of evidence, and then the demand for any more evidence is itself a kind of corruption of the intellect or a temptation or something to be guarded against. And you get a kind of perpetual motion machine of self-deception where you can, you can get this thing up and running. But they, they like the idea that it can't be demonstrated because there'd be, then there'd be nothing to be faithful about. Right. That's if, everyone, faith. yeah. if everyone had seen yeah. the resurrection yeah. and we all knew uh, that we, we'd been saved by it, so well, then we would be living in an unalterable system of belief and it would have to be policed um, right. well, actually, and it would actually be those of us who don't believe in it are very glad it's not true because we think it would be horrible those who do believe it don't want it to be absolutely proven so there can't be any doubt about it because then there's no exactly. there's no wrestling Somebody, with the conscience there are no dark nights of the soul it was a review of one of one of our books i don't remember which but it was exactly that point that that just what a crass uh, expectation on the part of atheists that that there should be total evidence for this. I mean, this, that they would, there'd be much less magic. Mm. You know, if everyone, if everyone was compelled to believe by too much evidence, actually, this is Francis Collins. I'm sorry, yeah. this is, yeah. this is well, Francis. My, Collins. A friend of mine, Canon Fenton of Oxford, yeah. actually, mm. uh, said that if the if they if the uh, church v validated the Holy Shroud of Turin, he personally would leave <laughs> the ranks because if okay. if they were doing things like that, he didn't want any part of it. Right. Um, the, it's too I didn't expect when I started off my book tour uh, to be as lucky as I was. I mean, Jerry Falwell died in my first week on the road. That was amazing. Yes, that was amazing luck. Um, I didn't expect Mother Teresa to come out as an atheist. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sort of but reading her letters, which I now have, mm. it's, it's rather interesting. She writes, I can't bring myself to believe any of this. She tells all her confessors, all her superiors, I can't hear a voice. I can't feel a presence, even in the Mass, even mm -hmm. in the sacraments, no small thing. And they write back to us saying, that's good. Right. That's great. Right. You're suffering. It gives you a share in the yeah. crucifixion. It makes you part of Calvary. Yeah. You can't beat uh, an argument like that. Right. The less yeah. you believe it, the more you're an illustration the more of it faith. You prove it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the, and the struggle, the, the, the dark night of the soul, is the proof in itself. Yeah. So we just have to realize that these really are non-overlapping magisteria. We can't. We can't hope to argue with a mentality of this kind. Well, I, uh, we, 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 but, but we can there. do we can do just what you're doing now, and that is, we can say, look at this interesting bag of tricks that have evolved. Notice that they are they're circular, that they're self-sustaining, that they don't have any that they could be about anything, and 
and then you don't argue with them. You simply point out that these are not, these are not uh, valid ways of, of thinking about anything. Uh, because you, can, right. you could use the very same tricks to sustain something which was manifestly fraudulent. And in fact, mm -hmm. what fascinates me is that a lot of the tricks, are, they have their counterparts with con artists. They, yeah. they use the very same forms of non-argument, the very same non-sequiturs, and they make, for instance, they make a virtue out of trust. And, and as soon as you start ex exhibiting any suspicion of the, of the con man who's about, he gets all hurt on you and, and, uh, and uh, plays the hurt feelings card and reminds you how wonderful taking it on faith is and how yes uh, I, I mean it, there aren't any there aren't any new tricks there, these tricks have evolved yeah. over and over you want to work out the production of bogus special effects as well which mm -hmm. is yeah, a, yeah. one of the things that completely convicts religion of being fraudulent the, right the, the the belief in the miraculous the same people will yeah. say well einstein felt a spiritual force in the universe when he said the whole point about it is there are no miracles the the, the there are no uh, in, in, uh, changes in the natural order. That's the miraculous right. thing. They, right. They're completely cynical about claiming him. Well, the, the other thing uh, worth pointing out... The same, almost the same breath. Is that th these... Mm -hmm. Every religious person stands... Uh, feels the same criticism of other people's faith that we do as atheists. I yeah. mean, they, they reject the pseudo-miracles and the, and the pseudo-claims to yeah, certainty yeah. of others. Uh, and they see the confidence tricks in other people's faith. And yep. they, they see it rather readily. Yep. You know, every yep. Christian knows the Quran can't be the perfect word of the creator of the universe, and anyone who thinks it is hasn't read it closely enough, and it's just in this hermetically sealed discourse that isn't really being self-critical. Uh, and I think we, we're on very strong, we make a very strong case when we point that out, and point out also that whatever people are experiencing in church or in prayer, no matter how positive, the fact that Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims and Christians are all experiencing it proves <laughs> that it can't be a matter of the divinity of Jesus or the unique sanctity of the mm -hmm. Quran or because because the, there's the 17 different ways of getting exactly. there yeah, yeah. Well, by the way on that a tiny point it's not I hope not a digression it's it's useful bearing that in mind too when you get as I did this morning on ABC News uh, the question well wouldn't you say religion did some good in the world I mean there are good people you never don't get that argument and by, yeah. the, by the way there's no reason why one shouldn't we say well Yes, I have indeed heard it said that Hamas provides social services in Gaza. <laughs> and I've even heard it said that Louis Farrakhan's group gets young black men in prison off drugs. I don't know if it's true. I'm, I'm willing to accept it might be. Right. It doesn't alter the fact that the one is a, a militarized terrorist organization with a fanatical anti-Semitic ideology, and the second is a racist crackpot cult. Yeah. And the and other... I have no doubt that Scientology gets people off drugs, too. But, yeah. uh, but uh, my, yeah. my insistence always with these people is if you will claim it for one, you must accept it for them all. And, and the other move you can make you, there is if you don't, it's flat out dishonest. You yeah. can invent a, an ideology which, by your mere invention in that moment, is obviously untrue, which would be quite useful if propagated to billions. I mean, uh, when in That's a, fine. you could say, uh, this is my new religion. Teach people to demand that your children study science and math and economics and all of our terrestrial disciplines to the best of their abilities and if they don't persist in those efforts they'll be tortured after death by 17 demons <laughs> um, this would be extremely useful and it would be far more useful than Islam propagated to billions <laughs> and yet what are the chances that the 17, bil yeah. 17 demons exist? You know, yeah. Zero. Oh. Yeah. There's a slipperiness too isn't there about uh, one way of speaking to sophisticated intellectuals and theologians and another way of speaking to congregations and above all <coughs> children and I think we've all of us been accused of uh, going after the easy targets of the Jerry yeah. Falwells of this world and ignoring the sophisticated yeah. uh, professors yes. of theology and I mean I don't know what you feel about that but one of the things I feel is that the sophisticated professors of theology will say one thing to each other and to in intellectuals generally, but will say something totally different to a congregation. They'll, they'll talk about miracles, they'll talk about... Well, they won't um, talk to a congregation. Well, <laughs> and, and, archbishops and fact, will. Uh, yes, but, uh, archbishops. but when the sophisticated theologians try to talk to the preachers, the preachers won't have any of it. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah, course, I mean, yeah, the, the, yeah. you got to realize that sophisticated theology is like stamp collecting. It's a very specialized thing, and mm -hmm. only a few people do it. And, and a negligible they influence. In, they take in, the in their own laundry, and... Uh, and uh, 
they uh, get all excited about some very arcane details and their own religions pay almost no attention to what they're saying. Uh, a little bit of it does, of course, filter in, but it always gets beefed up again for general consumption uh, because what they say in their writings, at least from my experience, is uh, eye-glazing, mind-twisting, uh, very subtle things which have no particular bearing on life. Oh, mm -hmm. no, I must insist. I must, I must say a good word <laughs> yeah. here for Professor Alistair McGrath, who in his <laughs> attack on, uh, on Richard said, it's not true, as we've always been told, and most, people, m most Christians believe, that Tertullian said, credo quae absurdum, I, quae absurdum, I believe it because it's right. ridiculous. No, it turns out, I've checked this now, though McGrath, I don't know this from McGrath, uh, that in fact Tertullian said, um, the impossibility of it is the thing that makes it the most believable. That's a well worth, well, distinction, I think. <laughs> and very useful for training one's mind. In the, yeah, uh, very useful for uh, training one's yes. mind in the fine points. Right. It, it's it's the, the likelihood, in other words, that it could have been made up, right. is diminished by the incredibility of it. Who would yeah. try and invent something that was is that unbelievable? So that, you no, make, that, you make that some actually, very good points. That actually on those lines. is. That actually yeah. is. That's a good I point. think a mm. debate perfectly well worth having. Mm. What I say to these people is this: You're sending your your email or your letter to the wrong address. Everyone says, let's not judge religion by its fundamentalists. All right. Take the Church of England. Um, two of whose senior leaders recently said that the floods in North Yorkshire were the result of homosexual behavior. Not in North Yorkshire, presumably, but probably in London, I think they're thinking. <laughs> so, but God's and aim is a little one off. Of, one of these, the Bishop of Carlisle, is apparently about to be the next Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, this is extraordinary. This is supposed to be the, the mild and reflective and thoughtful and rather, you know, troubled church, making fanatical pronouncements. Well, I want to hear what Alistair McGrath is going to write to the Bishop of Carlisle, not to me. Mm. Is no, he going to no. say, Ex my Lord Bishop, do you not realize what a complete idiot you've, you're making of yourself and of our church? Did he do this? If he did it in private, I'm not, I'm not impressed. He has to say it in public. The Bishop Why are they telling me, do, I will judge the church by the yeah. statements of its bishops, and I think no. I'm allowed to. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is that, never mind about the, the academic theologians, bishops and, and vicars, who will attack us for taking uh, scriptures, or, or, or for accusing people of taking scriptures literally. And of course, yeah. of course we don't believe the book of Genesis literally. And yet, they do preach about what Adam and Eve did, as though they, were, as though they did exist, as though they're somehow, it's a sort of license to no, talk no. about things which they know, and anybody of any sophistication mm. knows, is fiction, and yet they will treat their congregations, their sheep, um, as though they did exist, as though they were factual, and a, a huge number of those congregations actually think they did exist. Mm. Can you imagine any one of these preachers saying, as such a topic is introduced, um, this is a sort of theoretical fiction. It's yeah. not true, but, it, but it's a very fine metaphor. No, they, <laughs> they're just they not They kind of, going after the fact, imply that that's what they, the, the, what they expect you to know. Right? Yes, but, but, they, but yeah. they would never announce um, it. They would well, never there's another it. point there, is that they never admit how they have come to, to stop taking it literally. Mm. Because they, they, you, you have all these people criticizing us for our crass literalism. We're as, we're as fundamentalist as the fundamentalists. And yet, these moderates don't admit how they have come to be moderate. What does moderation consist of? It consists of uh, having lost faith in all of these propositions, or half of them, yep. because of just the hammer blows of science and, and secular politics. Of the and, and crass nationality. literalism of the critics. Yeah, yeah. It's, right. they, they, religion has lost its mandate on a, a thousand questions. And moderates tend to, to argue that this is somehow a triumph of faith, that faith is somehow self-enlightening, uh, whereas it's been enlightened from the outside. It has been, you know, we've had a, it has been intruded upon by On science. that point that I was wanting to raise myself about the, our own um, so-called fundamentalism, there's a cleric in Southwark 
the, the first person I saw attacking you and I in print as being just as fundamentalist as those who blew up the London Underground. Do you remember oh, his I, name? I, I don't remember his name. You, uh, I had, uh, uh, sorry, I don't remember. He's a very senior Anglican cleric in the Diocese of Southwark. I went on the BBC with him, just or, entre parenthèses, I'll say, the, when I said, how, how, can, how can you call your congregation a flock? Doesn't that say everything about your religion, that you think right. they're sheep? He said, well, actually, I used to be a, a pastor in New Guinea. <laughs> well, there aren't any sheep. Well, of course, there are a lot of places where there are right. no sheep. Gospel's quite hard to teach, as a result. <laughs> uh, we found out what the most um, important animal to the locals was, and I remember Pigs. very well my local um, bishop rising to uh, ask the divine one to uh, behold these swine. <laughs> his, his, con his new congregation. Uh, but he, this is the man who deliberately does a thing like that, that's as cynical as you could wish, and as adaptive as the day is long, and he says that we who doubt it are as fundamentalists as people who blow up their fellow citizens on the, on the London Underground. It's, it's unconscionable. Thus, I don't really mind being accused of ridiculing or treating with contempt people like that. I just frankly have no choice. I, 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 I have the faculty of humor, and some of it has an edge to it. I'm not going to repress that uh, for the sake of uh, politeness of people. Would, would you think that it would be good to make a distinction between the professionals and the amateurs? I share your uh, impatience with the officials of the churches, the, the pr people who this is their professional life, mm. it seems to me they know better. Right. The congregations don't know better because the, it's maintained that they should not know better. The con I, I do get very anxious about ridiculing the beliefs of the flock because of the way in which they have ceded to their leaders uh, they've, they've delegated authority to their leaders, and they, they presume their leaders are going to do it right. So uh, I think in this, uh, uh, you know, who takes, the, who stands up and says the buck stops here? Right. Well, it seems to me it's, it's, it's the preachers themselves, it's the priests, it's the bishops, and, and we really should hold their feet to the fire. For instance, let, uh, just take, take the issue of creationism. If somebody in a fundamentalist church thinks that creationism is, makes sense because their pastor told them. Well, uh, I, can, I can understand that and excuse that. We all, we all get a lot of what we take to be true from people that we respect and whom we view as authorities. We don't check everything out. But where did the pastor get this idea? And I don't care where he is. He or she is responsible because their, their job is to know what they're talking about in a way that the uh, congregation is. You isn't. have to be a little bit careful not to sound condescending when we say that. And, and in a way, it's reflecting the condescension yep. of the, of the mm. preacher. Yes, because mm. I'll, I'll, I'll take things that you and Richard say on the human and natural sciences, not without wanting to check, but I'm often unable to. But knowing that you are the sort of gentleman who would have checked, if you say, the bishop told me it, so I believe it, you make a fool of yourself, it seems to me, yeah. and one is entitled to say so just as one is entitled when dealing with an ordinary racist to say that his opinions are revolting. Uh, right. he, may be, he may know no better, but that's not going to save him from my condemnation. And nor should it. And I, I think exactly it's condescending not, not to confront yeah. people, as it were, one by one, or en masse. So but it public, is in public opinion is, well, is often wrong. Mob opinion is almost always wrong. Let's linger Religious, on this opinion is wrong. Religious opinion is wrong by definition. We can't, we can't avoid this I wanted to intrude the name H.L. Mencken at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now a very unjustly celebrated American writer, um, not particularly to my taste, much too much of a Nietzschean, mm -hmm. and, and what really was once meant by a social Darwinist right. at one stage. But he, why did he win the tremendous respect of so many people in this country in the 20s and 30s? Because he said the people who believe what the Methodists tell them and what William Jennings Bryan tells them are fools. They're not being fooled. They are fools. They should shame they, on they, them they, for they, believing these. Yes, yeah. it's un, yeah. they, they make themselves undignified and ignorant, and no mincing of words here, and a great admixture of wit and evidence and reasoning. Mm -hmm. It absolutely works. It's the most successful anti-religious polemic that's probably ever been in the modern world, I in the 20th century, anyway. I think we just touched upon an issue that we should really 
um, highlight this the whole yeah. notion of authority because yeah. religious people often argue that science is just a, a tissue of of uh, uncashed checks. You know, we're, we're all yeah, yeah. relying on authority. How do you know that that uh, the cosmological constant is whatever it is? You know, so how, I think you two are, are well placed to do this. Differentiate the kind of faith placing in authority that we practice without fear in science and, and rationality generally and the kind of faith placing in the, the preacher or the theologian that we, we criticize. Well, what we actually do when, when we who are not physicists take on trust what physicists say is we, uh, we have some evidence to suggest that physicists have looked into the matter, that they've done experiments, that they've peer-reviewed mm. their, their, their papers, um, that they've criticized each other, that they've been subjected to massive criticism from their peers in seminars and in, in lectures and things. Does and you, they've come through. And, 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 and remember the structure that's there too. Mm. It's not just that there's peer review, but it's very important that it's competitive. For instance, when uh, uh, Fermat's last theorem was proved by right. Andrew uh, Wiles, well, Andrew yeah. Wiles um, the reason that those of us who <laughs> forget it, I'm never going to understand that proof. Mm. Uh, but the reason that we can be confident that it really is a proof is that nobody wanted him to get there first. Every other yeah. <laughs> mathematician who was competent <laughs> in the world was was very well motivated to study to that. It, yeah. and, and and believe me, if they if they begrudge him that this is a proof, it's a proof. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing like that. In nothing like that. No, because when the antithesis of no, no, no religious, no religious person has ever been able to say, say what Einstein said. If, if, yeah. if I'm right, the following solar event will occur off the west coast of Africa in I forget how many mm. years and months right. from now, and it, and it did within a very tiny degree of variation. There's never been a prophecy that's been vindicated yeah. like, like yeah. that, or, or anyone willing yep. to um, place their reputation yep. and their, as it were, their life on the idea that it would be. I, I was once asked uh, at, at a public meeting, don't you think that the mysteriousness of quantum theory is just the same as the mysteriousness of the mm. trinity or the transubstantiation? <laughs> and the answer, of course, is, is, can be answered in two quotes from Richard Feynman. One Richard Feynman said, uh, if you think you understand quantum theory, you don't understand quantum theory. He was admitting that it's highly mysterious. Mm. But the other thing is that the, the predictions of quantum theory experimentally are verified to the equivalent of predicting the width of North America to the width of one human hair. Right. And so <laughs> quantum theory is massively yeah. supported yeah. by yeah. accurate predictions, even if you don't understand the mystery of, of, of the Copenhagen interpretation or whatever it is. Right. Whereas the mystery of the Trinity doesn't even try to make a prediction, let alone an accurate one. You know, I don't like... It doesn't, isn't a mystery either. I don't, I don't like the use of the word mystery here. Yes. I think, I think uh, this has been, there's been a lot of consciousness raising in philosophy about this term, mm -hmm. where we have so-called mysterians, the new mysterians. These are people who like the term mystery. Uh, Noam Chomsky is famously uh, quoted to say, there's, there's two kinds of questions, there's puzzles and mysteries. Puzzles are soluble, mysteries aren't. Mm. And First of all, I, I just don't buy that, but I buy, the, I buy the distinction and say there's nothing about mystery in science. There's, there's puzzles, there's deep puzzles, there's things we don't know, there's things we'll never know, but they aren't systematically incomprehensible to human beings. The, the, the glorification of the idea that these things are, are systematically incomprehensible is, I think, uh, has, has no place in, no. in science. Which is why I think we should be quite uh, happy to revive traditional terms in our discourse, such as obscurantism and obfuscation, mm -hmm. is what they really are. And, and to point out that these things can make intelligent people uh, act stupidly. Uh, John Cornwell, who's just written another, yes. another attack on yourself, Richard, and who's an old friend of mine, a very brilliant guy, wrote one of the best studies of the Catholic Church and fascism that has been published. Mm -hmm. He's, in his review of you, he says, Mr. Daw Professor Dawkins should just look at the shelves of books there are on the Trinity. <laughs> the library is full mm -hmm. of attempts to solve this problem mm -hmm. before he's so... Mm -hmm. but none of the books in those religious libraries solve it either. 
Yeah. It, the whole point is that it remains insoluble and is used to keep people feeling baffled and inferior. Uh, yeah. But I want to come back to the thing about mystery in, in, in physics because I isn't it possible that our evolved brains, because we, we evolved in what I call middle world, where, where um, we, we never have to cope with the, either the very small or the cosmologically very large, mm. we may never actually have an intuitive feel for what's going on in quantum mechanics, but yep. we can still test its predictions. Yep. We can still actually yep. do the mathematics and do the physics to actually test the predictions, because anybody can read the dials on a... Right. I think, I think <coughs> what, what we can see is that um, what scientists have constructed over the, over the centuries is a series of tools, mind tools, thinking tools, mathematical tools, and so forth, which enable us to some degree to overcome the limitations of our evolved brains, our, our uh, uh, Stone Age, if you like, brains. And overcoming those limitations is not always direct. Sometimes you have to give up something. You, yes, you'll just never be able to, as you say, to be able to think intuitively about this. But you can know that even though you can't yeah. think intuitively yeah, about right. it, there's this, there's this laborious process by which you can, mm. you can make progress. And you do have to uh, cede a certain authority to the process, but you can test that. Mm. And it can carry you from A to B in the same way, if you're, a, you yes. know, if you're a, a quadriplegic, a, 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 an artificial device can carry you from A to B. Doesn't mean you can walk from A to That's B, right. but you can get yeah. from A to right, B. Yes. Right. And the, the bolder physicists will say, well, who cares about intuition? I mean, just look at the math. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah uh, that's uh, right. They, they are... They are comfortable with yeah. their with living living with their with yes. their prostheses. Well, the perfect yeah, example right. of that is is just dimensions beyond mm -hmm. three, because we, we yeah, can't yeah, visualize right. a yes. fourth dimension or yeah. a fifth. Yeah. But it's trivial to represent it mathematically, yeah. and yes. so we, we can move. And into now other and now we teach our undergraduates how to manipulate n-dimensional spaces and to think about right. vector vectors vectors in n-dimensional spaces, and they get used to the fact they can't quite. Ima what you do is you imagine three of them and say you wave your hand a little bit and say more of the same yeah. and but you, you but you check your intuition by running the maths and it works but it's, it's easy to do something say you're a psychologist looking at personality and you say there are yeah. there are 15 dimensions of personality and you could think of them as being 15 dimensions in s could, in yeah. space yeah. And, and anybody can see that that you you can you can imagine moving along any one of those dimensions right. um, with respect to the to the others and you don't actually have to visualize 15 dimensional space no. that's and you give up that demand and you yes, realize yes I, I can live without that. It would be nice if I could do that, but hey, I can't see bacteria with the naked eye either. I can live without that. But I think yeah. there's one. Yeah, I was charged on, on the radio the other day by someone. He can't who see bacteria. He had to be fairly quiet. No, said I, he, that I believe in atoms on no evidence because I'd never seen one. Um, not since George Galloway said to me that, that he'd never seen a barrel of oil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That yeah, is well, it is, it's, cute. but it, you realize that people at this point, they're wearing themselves right, right down to their uppers. I mean, they're desperate when they get to this state. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I say it is because I think it could, I don't want us to make our lives easier, but it makes the argument a little more simple. We are quite willing to say there are many things we don't know. Or right. Haldane, I think it was, said, you know, the universe is not just queerer than we understand, it's queerer than we can understand. Um, we look. For, we know there'll be great new discoveries. We we know we'll live to see great things, but we know there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Mm. That's the whole distinction. The 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 believer has to say not just that there is a God, the the deist position, that there may be a mind at work in the universe, mm -hmm. a, a proposition we can't disprove. But the, they know that mind, exactly, and can yeah. interpret it. They're on good terms with it. They yes. have. They get yes. occasional revelations. They from have it. a book that is they get verbatim briefings from. Yes. Yes. Now, th this you, any yeah, decent yeah. argument, any decent intellect, has to begin by excluding people who claim to know more than they can possibly know. Yeah. You start yeah. off by saying, yeah. "Well, that's wrong." To begin with, now can we get on with it? Yeah. So theism's gone in the first round. Yeah. 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 It's off the island. Exactly. It's yeah. out of the show. <laughs> that's a footnote I wanted to add to what Dan was saying. Even if mystery 
was somehow something we had to just, a bitter pill we have to swallow in the end. We, we are cognitively closed to the, to the yeah. truth at some level. That still doesn't give any scope to theism. Absolutely not, because, because, and, because and, it's just as close to them as it is to and they, those who are. And, 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 and they, also they claim perfect transparency of revelation. And, and also they, they, can't, they can't be allowed to forget what they used to say when they were strong enough to get away with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Which is, this is really true right. in every detail. And if you and don't believe it, we'll kill we'll you. Kill you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll kill you, and it may take some days to kill you, but right. we'll, we'll, yes. we will we'll get the job slowly. done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, that they wouldn't have the power they have now if they hadn't had the power they had then. Right. Uh, and you know, this, what you just said, Christopher, um, actually, I think, strikes terror, strikes anxiety in a lot of uh, uh, religious hearts because it just hasn't been brought home to them that this move of theirs is just off limits. It's just not, it's not the game. It's not, it doesn't, you can't do that. And they've been taught all their lives that they, you can do that. This. This, is, this is a legitimate way of, of conducting a discussion. And here suddenly we're just telling them, I'm sorry, that is not a move in this game. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is a disqualifying move. Right. And they're, it's precisely they find the move that you can't be respected for making. Yeah, I'm, yes. Uh, the, just adumbrate the move for me a bit, if you would, or for us. Um, Perhaps only for me. Yeah. Somebody, say what you think that somebody, is. somebody plays the faith card. Yes. They say, look, I, I am a Christian, and we Christians, we just have to believe this, and it, you know, that's it. At which point, the, I guess the polite way of saying it is, well, okay, if that's true, you'll just have to excuse yourself from the discussion because you've, de you've declared yourself incompetent okay. to proceed uh, uh, with an open mind. Now, if That's you what really I can't, if you, you really saying. can't, if you really can't uh, defend your view, then sorry, you can't put it forward. We're not going to let you play the faith card. Now, if you want to defend what your holy book says in terms that we can appreciate, fine. But mm. because it says it in the holy book, that just doesn't cut any mm. ice at all. And if you think it does, you're clearly that is first of all. That's just arrogant. It is, it, is, it is a bullying move and we're just not going to accept it. And it's a move that they don't accept when, when exactly. done in the name of another faith. Exactly. Which but now, in which case could I ask you something, all three of you to, who are wiser than I on this matter, uh, what do we think of Victor Stenger's book that says that we can now scientifically disprove the existence of God? Do you have a view? Which of God? This? I haven't read the book. Which God? Which, the God, God any, say, any, any kind of any, uh, either any creating kind. one. Uh, or a supervising one, and certainly an intervening one. I mean, I think, uh, I think that's fairly exhaustive. Mm. I, my view had always been that since we have to live with uncertainty, only those who are certain leave the room before the discussion can become adult. Mm. Victor Stenger seems to think now we've got to the stage where we can say with reasonable confidence there's, it's, it's disproved, not as not vindicated or... Um, or the better explanation proposed. Just, I just mm -hmm. thought it would be an interesting proposition because it matters a lot to me yeah. that um, our, our opinions are, con are congruent with uncertainty. Right. Well, well I think the weak link... And in other words, with doubt. Yeah, I, I, I was a big fan of his book and actually uh, blurbed it, but um, I think the weakest link is the, this foundational claim on the texts. This idea that the, we know that the Bible is the perfect word of an omniscient deity because that, that is... The, that is an especially weak claim, and it really is the claim. It is really the, the, the gold in their their epistemological gold standard. I mean, it all rests on on that. That if the Bible is not a magic book, Christianity in this case evaporates. If the Quran is not the, a magic book, Islam evaporates. And when you look at the books and ask yourself, is there the slightest shred of evidence that this is the product of omniscience? Is there a single sentence in here that could not have been uttered by a person for whom a wheelbarrow would have been, you know, emergent technology, you have to say, no. I mean, there's just, there's not, if the Bible had an account of DNA and electricity and other yeah, things yeah. that would astonish us, yeah. then, okay, our yeah. jaws drop uh, suitably and we have to, yeah. to have a, a, a sensible conversation about the source of this knowledge. You know, Dinesh D'Souza makes this claim in his new book. He's going to be, I, by the way, one of the much more 
literate and well-read and educated uh, our antagonists uh, mm. I'm going to be debating soon. He says that in Genesis, when, which people used to mock, they said, let there be light, and then only a few staves later you get the sun and the moon and the stars. Right. How, how could that be? Well, that's yeah. actually, according to the Big Bang, that would be right. Yeah, but that's the bang pathetic. proceeds of the galaxies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, believe me, I put that <laughs> right. too. But um, right. well, I try to demonstrate <coughs> this 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 cast of mind in, I think, a very long end note in the end of faith, where I say any text can be read. Well, with the eyes of faith, you can make magical impressions out of any text. So I, I literally walked into a bookstore, the cookbook aisle of a bookstore, randomly opened a cookbook found a, a recipe for wok, wok, I think it was wok sheer, uh, seared shrimp with <laughs> ogo relish or something, and then came up with a mystical interpretation of the recipe. And you can do it. I mean, you can connect, play, connect the dots with any mm. crazy mm. text well, Michael and find Shama, wisdom in it. Michael Sharma did it with the Bible code. Right, I haven't seen yeah, that. The hidden yeah, messages in the, in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah. good. You, you can absolutely, you can write yesterday's headlines yeah. from it right. any time you like. Yeah. I, I have a question for the three of you. Is there any argument for faith, any challenge to your atheism that has given you pause, that has sent you back on your heels where you felt you're, you didn't have a ready answer, etc. I actually, I actually can't think of any. I mean, I think the closest yeah. is, the, is the idea that the, uh, the fundamental constants of the universe are too good to be true. And yeah. um, that uh, that does seem to me to need some kind of explanation if it's true. I think, I mean, Victor Stenger doesn't think it is true, but, but many physicists do. I don't think, I mean, it certainly doesn't in any way suggest to me a creative intelligence because you're still left with the problem of explaining where that came from. Right. Um, yes. And uh, a creative intelligence who's sufficiently creative and intelligent enough to fine-tune the constants of the universe to give rise to us has got to be a lot more fine-tuned himself than... Yeah, than why, why create all the other planets in our solar system dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a separate question. Yeah, say, well, yeah, if it yeah, was that good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. uh, yeah. uh, Bishop Montefiore was very good at this, was a, was a former friend of mine, say that you have to marvel at the conditions of life and the knife edge on which they are. So it is a knife edge, yes. Our planet is yes. a lot of it too hot or too cold. Right. Yeah. Sort of climate. Uh, the other, the other planets are yeah. completely too hot or too cold to support life. And that's just one solar system, mm -hmm. the only one we know about where there is life. Not much of a designer. And of course, you can't get out of the infinite regress. But I no, I've, I've not come across a single persuasive argument of that kind. But I wouldn't have expected to because, as I realised when I thought one evening, they never come up with anything new. Well, why would they? Their arguments are very old by definition, and they were all evolved when we knew very, very little about the natural order. The only argument that I find at all attractive, and this is for faith, you asked as well as for yeah. theism is what I, would, I guess, suppose I'd call the apotropaic, the, when people say uh, all the praise belongs to God for this. Um, he's to be thanked for all this. It is, that is actually a, a form of modesty. Hmm. It's a superstitious one, that's why I say apotropaic, but right. it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's avoiding hubris. It's also for that reason, obviously pre-monotheistic, but um, religion does or can help people to avoid hubris, I think, mm. morally yeah. and intellectually, and I, um, that, that might be a... But that's not an argument that it's true. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, 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 there, no, there, no. Are, there are and cannot be any such arguments. I think. Well, maybe I should broaden this well, question. No, no, wait a minute. Um, I think... Ah. <laughs> Before um, you answer, Dan, I, I, I could give you several, several uh, discoveries which would shake my faith let right, me, right to no, the no, ground. But let but me just broaden the question. Yeah, yeah. Not only... Rabbits uh, in the Precambrian. No, no, no. Yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> the, not only a, yeah, an no. argument for the plausibility of religious belief, but an argument that suggests that what we're up to, criticizing faith, is a bad thing. Oh, that's that, much easier. That we shouldn't be doing so. Yeah. Let's, let's, ex that's let's oh, exclude okay, that. Yeah. By all means. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, no. We shouldn't be doing what we're doing. That, that's, that, that's much easier. Okay. What's, it's easier to think of a... Oh, reason. I mean, it's, somebody could come up with an argument that says that the, that the world is a better place oh, and everybody that, yeah. believes a falsehood. Right. And, and, uh, yeah. um, is there any context, though, in your work or in dialogue with your critics where you feel that that argument has, has given you pause? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, uh, not so much in Breaking the Spell, but when I was working on my book on free will, uh, Freedom Evolves, mm. I kept running into critics who 
who were basically expressing something very close to a religious view, namely, look, sh 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 free will is such an important idea. If we gave up the idea of free will, we would have, people would lose a sense of responsibility and we would have chaos. And you really don't want to uh, look too closely. Just avert your eyes. Do not look too closely at this issue of free will and determinism. And I thought about that in explicitly in the uh, environmental impact category. Okay, could I imagine that my uh, irrepressible curiosity could lead me to articulate something, true or false, it's dangerous. which would have such devastating effects on the world that I, that, that I should just shut up and change the subject? Right. And I think that's a good question that we all should ask. Yeah, good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time uh, thinking hard about that, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have published either of those two books if I hadn't come to the conclusion that it was it was not only as it were environmentally safe to proceed this way, but obligatory. Mm. But but I think you should ask that question. I do. Right. Before publishing a book, but not before deciding for yourself, do I think that this is true or not? Uh, you, you one, one should never do what some politically motivated often critics do, which is to say, this is so politically obnoxious that it cannot be true. Oh, yeah. And which is a different, a different, it's a different thing entirely. Yeah. No, no. No, it would be like discovering that you thought that the bell curve yeah. on yeah. Uh, white and black intelligence mm. was a correct interpretation of IQ. Yes, and you could well suppress so publication. Now I've looked at all this stuff again, I'm absolutely, so you could say, now what am I going to do? Um, mm -hmm. uh, Fortunately, these questions don't in fact present themselves in that way. I'll tell you one place where it's, it's uh, presented itself to me. This, uh, I think it was an op-ed in the LA Times, I could be mistaken, but someone argued that the reason why the Muslim population in the U.S. is not radicalized the way it is in, in Western Europe is largely the result of the fact that we honor faith so much in our discourse that they have not become, the community has not become as insular and as, and as uh, 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 grievance ridden as, 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 in as, 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 as in Western Europe. Now, I don't know yeah. if this is true, but if it were true, mm. that gave me a moment's pause. That it, would be of interest. James Wolfenson, yeah. of the, later the World Bank, recently the negotiator on Gaza, mm. says that he firmly believes that he had uh, tremendous influence for good with the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas because he was an Orthodox Jew. Hmm. If so, I think it would be disgusting. I have to right. say. And he shouldn't have had the job in the first place because the, we know one absolute thing for certain about that conflict, which is that it's been made infinitely worse by the monarchy. By, yeah, yeah. If it were only a national and territorial dispute, it would have been solved by now. So, but his self satisfaction in saying so. Um, even if it were true, uh, would turn me even more against him. The, the, there are two, two issues converge here. One is the question, what do we want to accomplish? Uh, what do we reasonably think we can accomplish? And then this, this article of faith that I think circulates, unfortunately, among people of our uh, viewpoint, that you can't argue anyone out of their beliefs. I mean, well, is this a completely fatuous exercise, or can we actually win a war of ideas with people? And, and I think, uh, certainly judging from my email, we can't. I mean, I'm constantly getting email from people who have lost their faith and, in effect, been argued out of it. And, and, and the, the straw that broke that camel's back was either one of our books or some other process, process of, of reasoning uh, or uh, incompatibility of what they knew to be true and what they were told by their faith, that um, I think we have to just highlight the fact that it's possible for people to be shown the contradictions and sh uh, in, internal to their faith or the contradiction between their faith and what we've come to know to be true about the universe. And they just, they, you know, it, it can, the process can take minutes or months or years, but they, they, they have to renounce their superstition in the face of what they now know to be true. I, I was having an argument with a very sophisticated biologist who's a brilliant expositor of evolution, and he uh, still believes in God. And I said, how can you? What, what's this all about? And he said, I accept all your rational arguments. However, it's faith. And then he said this very significant phrase to me, there's a reason that it's called faith. 
He said it very decisively, very almost aggressively. There's a reason that it's called faith. And that was to him the absolute knockdown clincher. Uh, right. You can't argue with it because it's faith. And he said it proudly and defiantly rather than in any sort of yeah. apologetic way. You, know, you get it all the time in North America from people who say you've got to read um, William James and have had to, to be able to judge other people's subjective experiences. which is something that's by definition impossible to do. Right. If it's real to them, why can't you respect it? I mean, this wouldn't be accepted in any other field of argument at all. The oppression people are under is the yes. critical thing about them. I had a debate with a very senior Presbyterian in, in Orange County. I asked him, because we were talking about biblical literalism, of which he wasn't an exponent, but mm. I said, well, what about the graves opening at the time of the crucifixion according to St. Matthew? Matthew, I'd rather say. Mm. And everyone getting out of their graves in Jerusalem, walking around greeting old friends in the city. I was going to ask him, doesn't that rather cheapen the idea of the resurrection of Jesus? But he mistook my purpose. He wanted to know if I believed that had happened. That was what he thought. Right. And he said that as a historian, which he also was, he was inclined to doubt it. Right. But that as a Presbyterian minister, he thought it was true. I thought, well, well, all right then. How can no, 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 I'm sorry. See, for me, it was enough that I got him to say that. Right. I said, in that case, I rest right. my case. In fact. Yeah. I don't want to say any more to you now. You've said all I could say. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one, one other chip I'd like to put on the table here. There's this phenomenon of someone like Francis Collins, or, your, or the, the biologist you just mentioned, who, someone who obviously has enough of the facts on board, you know, enough of a scientific education to know better, yeah. and still does not know better, or professes not to know better. And there, I think we have a cultural problem where, um, and this was actually brought home to me at one uh, talk I gave, a, a physics professor came up to me, uh, at the end of the talk and told me that he had brought one of his graduate students who was a, a devout Christian and who was quite shaken by my talk and, the, and, and all I got from uh, of this uh, report was that this was the first time his faith had ever really been explicitly challenged and so there's something about that it's true, it's true to say that you can go through the, the curriculum of becoming a scientist and never have your faith explicitly challenged because it's taboo to do so. Yeah. And now we have you know, engineers who can build nuclear bombs in the Muslim world who s still think it's, it's plausible metaphysics that you can get to paradise and get 72 virgins. And we have people like Francis Collins who think that on Sunday you can kneel down in the dewy grass and give yourself to Jesus because you're in the presence of a frozen waterfall and on Monday, you can be a, 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 a physical geneticist. Well, according to our friend, uh, uh, the great Pervez uh, Hudboy, the great uh, Pakistani yeah. physicist, there are people who think you can use the jinns, the devils, right. and harness their power for the reactor. It's almost tempting to fund such a project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it seems, um, and I gather that, um, again, I, I can't get over him still, the, the respected um, Tariq Ramadan of St. Anthony's College, Oxford, says in his book, I'm told that he believes in jinns too. Right. Right. I hope I'm not doing him an injustice. I've been told that in his book, in the steps of the prophet, he says as much. So one, one is up against things that are flat out primitive and uh, superstition. I think it may be easier than, we, than we're, we're supposing to shake people's faith. There's been, there's been a moratorium on this for a long time. We're, we're just the, the beginning of a, of, a, of a new wave of explicit attempts to shake people's faith. Mm. And it's bearing fruit. And the obstacles, it seems to me, are, are not that we don't have the facts or the arguments. It's these strategic reasons for not professing it, not admitting it. Uh, not admitting it to yourself, not admitting it in public, because your 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 family is going to view it as a betrayal. Uh, um, you're you're just embarrassed to admit that you were taken in by this for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes, I think, tremendous courage to just declare that you've given that all up. And if we can find ways to help people find that courage and give them some examples of people who have done this and, uh, you know, they're doing just fine. They may have lost the affections of a parent or something like that. They may have hurt some family members, but still, I think it's a good thing to encourage. And I don't think we should, I don't think we should assume 
that we can't do this. I think we can. Yeah. Yes, I, it, it, it's almost patronizing to suggest that, that, that we couldn't. I mean, to suggest that, yeah, that, yeah. that it shouldn't, that it's not. On the other hand, I think we all know people who seem to manage this kind of split brain feat of, uh, as Sam said, be believing one thing on a Sunday and then something totally contradictory yeah, yeah. or in on, in, incompatible on, in, the, in the rest of the week. And there's nothing, I suppose, neurologically wrong with that. I mean, there's no reason why one shouldn't um, have a brain that's split in that, mm -hmm. yeah. that kind but, of way. But it, but it is unstable in a certain way. But, yeah. And I'm sure you're right that people do this and they're very good at it. And they do it by deflecting attention from it. Yeah. And let's start. But, but how let's you can start, live with it? Let's start focusing attention. How, well, how can you uh, live with a contradiction in your... The, the by not... By, by forgetting that you're doing this and by not attending to it. I think what I would love to do is, is to invent a a memorable catchphrase or term that would rise unbidden in their minds when they caught themselves doing it. Mm -hmm. And then they would think, oh, this is one of those yes. cosmic shifts that, yes. that right. Dennett and Dawkins and Harris and, and Hitchens are talking about. Oh, right, and they, they, they think this is somehow illicit. Just, just to create a little more awareness in them of what a strange thing it is that they're doing. Yeah. I'm afraid to say that I think that cognitive dissonance is probably necessary for everyday survival. Everyone does it a bit. Mm. Um, you mean tolerating cognitive dissonance? No, practicing. Actually practicing. I mean, practicing, because, I, mean, I don't know, take the case of someone who's a member of uh, moveon.org. They think the United States government is a brutal, militaristic, imperial regime. It crushes the poor and invades other people's countries. Mm. And, but they, they pay their taxes. It's a, a very, very rare that they don't. They send right. their children to school. They do their stuff. You know, they, don't, they don't act all the time as if 10% of what they believe is true. Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but, but partly because it point. would be impossible. Same with people in, in the 50s who, members of the John Birch Society, who thought President Eisenhower was a communist. Okay, you get up in the morning, you believe that. Mm. It's, the what White House is run by the Kremlin. But then you have to go and get the groceries. Right. Right. And do all that well, stuff. Yes, why aren't you, you still have to go and do too it. many commitments, yeah. yeah. yeah but, it, but you absolutely wouldn't be challengeable in your belief. It would be very, very important to you, but there would be no way in your life, your real life, of yeah. vindicating or practicing the opinion that you have. And I'm sure that the same is true of people who say, well, I, you know, I shouldn't really prefer one child to another or one parent to another, but I, I do. I'm just not going to act as if I do. Right. All kinds of things of this kind. But what do you think as, as educators? Or Senator Craig saying he's not gay. Yeah. I think in his own mind he's absolutely sure he's not. Right. Yeah. But yeah. he can't handle, he can't manage his life by saying he is. Or he isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a question I wanted to ask was this. Do, we should ask ourselves what our real objective is. Yeah. Do we in fact wish to see a world without faith? I think I would have to say that I don't. I don't either expect to or wish to see that. What do, you, what do you mean why, by faith? I don't think it's possible uh, because it, it, it replicates so fast, faith, as often as it's cut down or, or superseded or discredited. It replicates, it seems to me, extraordinarily fast. I think for Freudian reasons, hmm. principally to do with the fear of extinction. Or so you mean faith or in supernatural yes. paradigms? The wish. But wish. Why would you not wish it? Wish thinking. And then the other thing is, would I, would I want this argument to come to an end? With all yeah, having conceded like that Hitchens really questions. won that round. Now yeah. nobody in the world believes right. in God. Now, apart from being unable to picture this, <laughs> but I'm not yeah. completely certain that it's what I want. I, I, think yeah. it's a, I think it is rather to be considered as sort of the foundation of all arguments about epistemology, philosophy, biology, and so on. That it's, it's the thing you have to always to be arguing against, the other, the other well, explanation. It's an extraordinary thing. I, I yeah. don't understand what you're I mean, I understand right. you're saying that it'll, it'll never work. But I don't understand why you wouldn't wish it. Because I, I think, um, as a, a bit like the argument of uh, um, the argument between, I mean, uh, Huxley and Darwin. I'm sorry, excuse me, Huxley and Wilberforce, mm. or um, <coughs> Darrow and uh, William Jennings Bryan. I want it to go on because it's but interesting. You, it's yeah, I, want it to, I want our side to get more refined and theirs to be ever more exposed. Mm. But I can't see it with one hand clapping. Well, what do you, I mean, you, you don't want it to go on with the jihadists. I mean, there's a certain face of this. No, but my, I don't have a difference of opinion with the jihadists. 
Well, you, well, you do in terms of the legitimacy no, no, of their no, project. No, no, not really, no, there's nothing to argue about with them. I mean, they're a sort of simple matter as well. I want them to be extirpated. Or then move it down to the people yeah. who are blocking stem cell no, research. No, that, it's a pure, that is a purely primate response to, with me. They're recognizing the need to destroy an enemy in order to right. assure my own survival. I have, no, I have no interest at all in what but it they But it sounds think. like you're not I mean, really, really, this, yeah. we haven't still come to your question uh, about Islam, but right. no interest at all in what they think. Only interested in refining methods of, of destroying them. Okay. In other words, you've, you've simply given a task up... In by the, a task in which, by the way, one gets very little secular support. Yes. Most yeah, yeah, atheists don't yeah. want this fight. Yeah. The most important one is the one they want to shirk. They'd far rather go well, off and dump on Billy Graham. Well, because I on think, that they uh, know that they can't, uh, I think there's no that, danger. I think that because we, we find the, the idea of exterminating these people just abhorrent, and we think that besides, it will... No, it I said will extra, them extirpating. Extirpating. Yes. Complete destruction of the jihadist forces. Extermination, I think, must has to be applied more as a species or to... No, but Christopher, well, go, yes. going back to your, to your thing about, it sounds as though you like argument, you like having, it's almost the theatre of the process, having an intellectual yeah. argument which would be lost. Well, I would rather say the dialectic, actually, Richard. In other words, one learns from arguing with other people. Yes. And I think all of us around this table have probably enhanced or improved our own capacities as reasoners. Yes, but, this, but I mean, there are plenty of other things to reason about. You can, you can yeah. ha having won the battle against religion, we can go back to science or whatever it is we, we, yes. we practice, and we can, we can argue and reason about that, and there's plenty of arguments that are really worthwhile. But I, it'll yeah. always be the case that some will attribute their presence here to the laws of biology, and others will attribute their presence here to a divine plan that has a scheme for them. Well, that's, that's and you can tell a lot, in my view, about people from which view they take. And as we all know, only one of those views makes sense, but one, well, how do we know that? Because we have to contrast it with the opposite one. But let's, let me make an which analogy Which is not going, here, though, not going to spin. Because you could, you could have said the same thing about witchcraft at some point in, yeah. in, in recent history. You could say that every culture has had a belief in witches, a belief in the efficacy of magic spells. Witchcraft is just is ubiquitous and we're never going to get rid of it and we're fools to try. Uh, or we can try only as a matter of dialectic. Uh, but witchcraft is, is going to be with us. Well, uh, and yet witchcraft is, has f almost without exception, I mean, you can find certain communities. Not at all, not at all. No, I mean, real witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft as, witchcraft as is completely in ineradicable, it spreads like weed, often under animist and Christian. No, 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 I think we've got, oh, fundamentally we've got yeah. rid of that, yes. But in any case, it, don't, don't you want to get all. rid of it? I mean, yes. Not at all. There's, cur there's currently a campaign to get Wiccans registered to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. Well, oh, but Wiccans, Modulo, the Wiccans, Wiccans are to witchcraft yeah, as Unitarians uh, are. Right. <laughs> they're, they're not real. Well, I'm, I'm talking Call about, I'm talking about yeah, yeah. a willingness to yeah. kill your neighbor because you think that there is some causal mechanism by which they, through their evil intent, could have destroyed your crops psychically. You know, or cast an evil eye upon your. I mean, it comes. It comes in ignorance yes, yes. Of, of of medical science. I mean, you don't know why people get sick, and you suspect your neighbor of ill intent, and then witchcraft fills the void there. No, I wouldn't say in such a case that one wished to be. Uh, uh, one didn't wish to be without it. That we lost something. But, but we, to we, we are effectively. With, I mean, we're not dealing with with the claims of witches intruding upon medical. Don't don't go to alternative medicine and it, acupuncture here. I'm talking about real witchcraft. Well, I was, medieval actually, I was witchcraft. about to do that very thing. Yeah. And the Washington Post publishes a, 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 a horoscopes every day. Yeah. Uh, astrology yes, is that yet is another matter. That it, but astro think, astrology I'm is a is Let's a take a pale moment. Astrology is not going to be eradicated. Believe okay, well, but it doesn't need to be no, but you're confusing yeah. whether it's yeah. going to be eradicated and whether you want it to be eradicated. And, and it sounds as though you don't want it to be eradicated because you want something yeah. to argue against and something to sharpen yes, your think, wits. I think right. that is, in fact, what I... What yeah. I but, but in what fact, I mean. instead of thinking about eradication, why, why not think about it the way, the way uh, uh, an evolutionary epidemiologist would and, and say what we want to do is we want to encourage the evolution of a virulence. We want to get rid of the harmful kinds and, and w I mean I don't care about astrology. I don't think it's harmful enough. I mean it was a little scary when Reagan was <laughs> reportedly uh, using astrology to make decisions but that I hope anomalous case aside I find the superstition that astrology is, is important to be 
relatively harmless if we could only do the same thing, if we could only relegate the other enthusiasms to the status right. of astrology, I'd be happy. Right. Well, yeah. look, you don't accept my, or you don't like my answer, but I think the question should be, is going to be asked of us. It was asked of me today, actually, again, on the, on the TV. He said, do you wish no one was going to church this morning in the United States? Right. What's your answer? Well, I've given mine. Uh, no, I know. Richard's disagreed. I, 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 but uh, well, the answer I gave this morning was, I think people would be much better off without false consolation, and I don't want them trying to inflict their beliefs on me. So they'd be doing themselves and me yeah. a favor if they gave it up. Mm. Uh, so perhaps in that sense, I contradict myself. I mean, I, I wish they would stop it, but I, then I would be left with no one to argue with. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you, you have many other subjects. That, and, I don't, and I certainly didn't say that I thought if they'd only listened to me, they would stop going. Okay, so there are two questions right. here. So here's my, that was my very experimental answer. But I'd love to hear, would you like to say that you look forward to a world where no one had any faith in this? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I want to answer this. Uh, yeah. um, whether it's astrology or religion or, or anything else, I want to live in a world where people think skeptically for themselves, look at evidence, not because astrology is harmful, I, I guess it probably isn't harmful, but if you go through the world thinking that it's okay to just believe things because you believe them without evidence, then you're missing so much. And the, the, it, to, It's such a wonderful experience to live in the world and understand why you're living in the world and understand what makes it work, uh, understand about the real stars, understand about astronomy, that it's an impoverishing thing to, uh, to be reduced to the pettiness of astrology. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you can say the same of, of religion. The universe is a grand, beautiful, wonderful place. And it's petty and parochial and cheapening to believe in um, jinns and supernatural creators and supernatural interferers. I think you could make an aesthetic case that, it, that you, we want to get oh, rid of. Oh, fine. I, 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 I could not possibly agree with you more. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about priorities. Okay. Um, if we could just get rid of some of the most mm -hmm. pernicious and noxious excesses, what would, what, yeah. would, what would be the triumphs you would go for first? What would, what would really thrill you as, a, as, a, as, a, as an objective reached? Let's, right. let's look at Islam, and let's look at Islam as realistically as we can. Is there any remote chance of a reformed, reasonable Islam? Well, isn't the present savage Islam actually rather recent? Isn't it the Wahhabi? Um, but did, but you have to go back quite a ways, I think, well, to get to get only the, up to a point. I mean, I, I think there's, and again, you, none of us are the. Uh, whether we're equipped to do it, we're not the most persuasive uh, mouthpieces of this criticism. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes someone like Ayan Hirsi Ali or uh, a Muslim scholar, you know, someone like Ibn Warwick, to authentically criticize Islam and have it be heard by, by people, but uh, especially the secular uh, liberals of a sort who don't trust our take on this. But um, it seems to me you, you have different historical moments in the, the history of Islam that are distinct. One where Islam really has, uh, you have a, you, some, some Muslim, you have a caliphate or you have some Muslim country which is, ha has a, a reign of Islam and is unmolested but for whatever period of time from the outside and then Islam can be as uh, uh, totalitarian and happy with itself as possible and you don't see the, 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 the inherent conflict and the inherent um, liability of its creed. I mean, we, the, uh, Samuel Huntington said Islam has bloody borders. It's at the borders that, that we're noticing this problem and the, uh, the borders of Islam and modernity at this moment, the conflict between Islam and modernity. Uh, but you, yes, you can find instances in the history of Islam where people weren't running around waging jihad because they had successfully waged jihad. Yeah. Uh, but yes, then what yes the but what about women in what, that Exactly, world? the suffering um, of women within, uh, within those borders. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, e even in the best of times. But yeah. there's also, the, there's obviously some kind of syncretism. I mean, we know quite a lot now, there have been some wonderful books, um, Maria Menachal's book on Andalusia, for example, mm. on periods where Islamic civilization was uh, relatively at peace with its neighbors and 
and doing a lot of work of its own on matters that were not jihadist and I saw myself in, um, during the wars in post Yugoslavia that the Bosnian Muslims would behave far better than the Christians right. um, either Catholic or Orthodox and were, were the victims of religious uh, massacre and not the perpetrators of them and yeah. were the ones who believed the most in multiculturalism so it can it can happen and you, there were even you could even meet people who said they were atheist Muslims or Muslim atheists wow. or Muslim secularists in in in, in Sarajevo yeah. in Sarajevo yeah. you could yeah uh, which is it, well, you which is couldn't. a technical impossibility but right. the problem is this yeah. wh whether we think as i certainly very firmly do believe that totalitarianism is innate in all religion uh, because it has to want an absolute unchallengeable eternal authority in all religion must be so the creator whose will can't it's it, our comments on his will are unimportant hmm. yeah. we his, his will is absolute it right. cannot be challenged and applies after we're dead as well as before we're born. I mean, that is the origin of totalitarianism. I think Islam states that in the most um, alarming way in that it um, comes th as the third of the monotheisms and says n nothing further is required. Right. This is the last, th there have been previous words from God, we admit that. We don't claim to be exclusive, but we do claim to be final. Yeah. Uh, there's no need for any further work on this point. And we That's, do claim that there's that no the distance between the worst theology thing, and in our world, In our world, surely, the worst thing anyone can say is no further inquiry oh, yeah. is needed. Right. Uh, mm. we, you've already got all you need to know. All else is commentary. That's the most sinister and dangerous thing. And that is a claim that uh, Islam makes that others don't quite make in the same way. Well, let me play devil's advocate for a moment on that There's no point. refutation of Islam in Christianity or Judaism. But there is in Islam, right. let's say, so we, we accept yeah. all the bad bits yeah. of Judaism. We love Abraham and his sacrifice of his son, or willingness to sacrifice. Yeah. We love all that. We, we absolutely esteem the virgin birth, the most nonsensical bits of Christianity. We think, oh, that's great. We, you're all yeah. welcome to join, but we have the final word. Right. That's deadly. Yes. And, and I think our existence is incompatible with that preaching. Let me, let me just play devil's advocate for a moment so we, at least we're clear what the position is. Um, I'd rather speak for the devil pro bono myself. Well, okay. <laughs> we can all speak for the devil. I'm sure a lot of people think we're doing just that. Um, I, for one, think that the fact that something is true is not quite sufficient for spreading it about or for trying to discover it. Uh, the idea that there's things we should just not try to find out is an idea that I take seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think we at least have to examine the proposition that there's such a thing as knowing more than is good for us. Now, if you accept that so far, then a possibility we have to take seriously, even when we reject it, we should reject it having taken it seriously, is the Muslim idea that indeed, the West has simply gone way too far, that there is lots of, this is knowledge that's not good for us, it's knowledge that, that we were better off with that, and the fact that many Muslims would like to turn the clock back, they, they can't, of course. Mm. But I have a certain sympathy for a, for a Muslim who says, well, yeah, the cat's out of the bag, it's too late, it's a tragedy. Um, you in the West have exposed truths to yourselves, and now you're forcing them on us, that the, 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 the species would be better off not knowing. Mm. Would, I'm absolutely riveted by what you say. I'd, I'd really love an in instance in theory or practice of something you think we could know but could forbid ourselves to know. Because that is harder for me to imagine well, the world uh, without um, faith. I well, you brought up the bell curve. I mean, if there, if there yes. were reliable differences in intelligences bet between races yes. or species or But or I don't think any of us here do think that that's the case. I mean, I think there must be something, you must have thought of something you could believe but wish you didn't know. Oh, I don't think, it, I don't think it's hard to dream up things which, if they were true, it might be better for the human race to go on not knowing them. But yeah. would, could, could you, could you, you concretize it just no, a little more? Yeah. I mean, I'm completely it, it, I mean, the hypothetical is one thing, but Christopher's asking, do you, do you actually, Was have, you, have you ever mind? suppressed something? That, no, that, no, that, I no, I haven't. No. Can you imagine yourself doing so, by the way? I mean, I can't. Oh, I can imagine it. I hope it never comes up. Well, t but take, take the, 
the synthesizing of bioweapons. I mean, what, should, yeah. should, should yeah. nature publish the code for smallpox where you can just, you know, oh, anyone okay. in his yeah, lab exactly. can There's all those cook sorts it up. Oh, well, all oh, right. But that, that wouldn't be a, 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 knowledge of, a knowledge of which we should remain innocent. Well, that, would be an ability, think, that would be more like a capacity. I think with foresight, it's, if, it's, it's certainly you can see, conceive of a circumstance where someone can seek knowledge, w the, the only conceivable application of which would be unethical, or the dissemination no, of no. which would give us, put power in the wrong no. hands. Or, yes. I mean, it's, but actually, you, you brought up something which I think is, is um, crucial here, because it's not so much the, the spread of, of the raw, of, 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 uh, seditious truths to Islam or the rest of the world that I think we're guilty of in, in the eyes of, of uh, our opponents. It's the, it's the not honoring of, of facts that are not easily quantified and easily discussed in, in science. I mean, you, the classic retort to, to all of us is, prove to me that you love your wife. I mean, as though this is a knockdown argument against atheism. You can't prove it. Well, if you unpack that a little bit, you can prove it. You can demonstrate yeah, it. We know what yeah. we mean by love. It's, it, yeah. um, but there is this, this domain of the sacred that is not easily captured by science, and, and, is, and scientific discourse has really ceded it to, to religious discourse. Well, and artistic discourse, yeah, which is yes. not religious necessarily. But ba I would argue it's not even well captured by art necessarily. There's something... Um, in the, in the same way that love is not really well captured by art, and compassion is not well, I mean, you can, you can represent it in art, but it's not reducible to, you don't, you don't go into the museum and find compassion in its, in its purest form. Um, and I think there's, there's something about the way we, as atheists, merely dismiss the, the bogus claims of religious people that, uh, convinces religious people that there's something we're missing. And I think this is, we have to be sensitive mm. to this. Absolutely. Um, they, that's why they bring up, uh, what about the, when, when has secularism ever built anything like Durham Cathedral or right. Chartres or um, devotional painting or the music of Bach? Uh, but I, th I, I think guess we have, have, we to have answers yes. to that. I think we have answers to that. I mean, you, and you, yes, you we provide do. a very good answer to that. If, if, if there was secular patronage of the arts at that point, then, you know, one, we can't know that Michelangelo was actually a believer because the consequences of professing your unbelief in that case was, was death. Uh, but two, if we had a secular organization uh, to, commission to commission Michelangelo, you know, he, the, we would have all that secular artwork. Though do you, do you, I, I didn't actually say that the corollary held. Which? I, I think it's true we can't know with devotional painting right. and sculpture. No, actually, actually, the, the, the patronage didn't have a lot to do with it, but um, I can't hear myself saying, if only you had a secular painter, you'd have done just as good work. Oh, no, no, I think I'm devotional. using I, you and Richard there. Yeah, I yeah. think I, I, I can't, I don't know why, um, and I'm quite happy to find that I don't know why. I can't quite hear myself what, saying what, that. That, that. That Michelangelo, if he'd been commissioned to do the ceiling of a museum of science, wouldn't have produced something just as wonderful. In some way, I'm reluctant to to really? affirm yeah. that, yes. I find it very, very easy to, uh, <laughs> to believe yep. that. That could be a difference between this. I mean, with, yep. with, with devotional poetry, where I do think, I, I don't know very much about painting and architectural music, right. but, um, and some of the devotional architecture, like, say, St. Peter's, you know, I don't... It couldn't be done. I right. don't like any, I don't like any way. And, any, and knowing that it was built by a special sale of indulgences uh, doesn't help either. Yeah, right. um, with devotional poetry like that of, say, John Donne or George Herbert, I find it very hard to imagine that it's faked or done for a patron. I mean, yes, people I think that's people would be very, it would be very improbable if people would write poetry right. like that. But could it be done in the spirit of anyone, mm. Well, I, I frankly think that's the only explanation. But, but in any case, what conclusion would you draw? I mean, if, if Donne's devotional poetry is wonderful, Yes. So what? I mean, it, does, it doesn't show that it's, it, it represents truth in any sense. Not in the least. Well, no. My favorite devotional poem is um, Philip Larkin's uh, Church Going, right? one of the best mm -hmm. poems ever written. Right. It exactly expresses, I wish I had it here. Well, actually, I do have it here. If you like, I can read it. But uh, I wouldn't trust anyone who believed any more or any less than Larkin does when he goes to a wayside Gothic church in the English countryside. Right. Right. Who felt, I don't say believed, I shouldn't say believed, who felt any more than he does. He's an atheist. Mm. Or, or who felt any less that there's something serious about this. All right, but and something written into the human personality and as well mm -hmm. as the landscape. 
Well, this but brings us back I don't, to your, your I don't question. see that this is it anything about, other than it goes a special saying, case. It says nothing of, about the truth of religion. I don't think this is any, see how this is anything other than a special case, other special cases of which would be, um, uh, you just couldn't, I can't think of a perfect example of this, only by being lost at sea for two years in a boat and then surviving that, that's the only way you could conceivably have written yeah. this, this account. It could not be fiction. Or quit smoking. And, 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 uh, and it's yes. glorious, wonderful art, and it, right, that, could, that can be true, and we just accept. That's true. And, and Dunn's poetry, only very extreme circumstances could make it possible. And we can be grateful, perhaps, that those extreme circumstances existed and made this possible. In his case. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. But now you wouldn't recommend being lost at sea to everyone. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I wouldn't recommend death be not proud to anyone either. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. It's a complete gibberish if you look only at the words. Mm. But, but you it's the most extraordinary gibberish if you look at any of the words, but, but there's an X factor involved, which I'm quite happy to both assume will persist and will need to be confronted. Right. You, you raise this issue, though, of, of whether or not we would wish the church is emptied on Sundays. And I, I think you were, you were uncertain whether you would. And I, I think I would agree. I'm, I, I would want a different church. I would, I would want a different ritual motivated by different ideas. But I think there's, there's a place for the sacred in our lives and but under some, con, some construal that doesn't presuppose any bullshit. Uh, but there's, 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 I think there's a, a usefulness to seeking profundity as a matter of our attention. Sure. And, and our, our neglect of this area, I think, as atheists, uh, at times makes even our craziest opponents seem wiser than we are. And I mean, take someone like uh, Saeed Qutub, who's you know, as crazy as it gets. I mean, Osama bin Laden's favorite philosopher. Uh, but he came out to Greeley, Col Colorado, I think it was, around 1950, yes. and spent a year in America and noticed that all his American hosts were spending all their time gossiping about movie stars and trimming their hedges and coveting each other's automobiles. And he he came to believe that that America was so, or the West, was so trivial in its preoccupations and so materialistic that it had to be destroyed. Now, this, isn't, this shouldn't be construed as giving any credence to, to his worldview, but he has a point. There, there is something trivial and horrible yes. about the day-to-day -day fascinations of most of us and most people most of the time. There is, there is something, there's a difference between kind of really using your attention wisely in a meaningful way and our perpetual distraction. And, and traditionally, only religion has tried to, un to enunciate and, and clarify that difference. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's, it, that's a, a lapse in, in our... I think world. you've made that point and we've accepted it, Sam. Yeah, and I, yeah. think, I think that's, I mean, the, as going back to the thing about whether we like to see churches empty, I think I would like to see churches empty. What I wouldn't like to see, however, is ignorance of the Bible. No, uh, because right. you cannot understand literature without knowing the Bible. You can't yeah. understand yeah. art, you can't understand music. Yeah. There are all sorts of things you can't understand for historical yeah. reasons. Uh, and, but those historical reasons you can't wipe out, they're there. And so even if you don't actually go to church and pray, you've got to understand what it meant to people to pray, and why they did it, and what these verses in the Bible mean, and what this... But, it, but is it only that? Just the retrospective kind of historical appreciation you could, of, of you, our You could more than just appreciate ignorance? it, you can lose yes. yourself in it, just as you can lose yourself in a work of fiction, right. without actually believing that the characters are, are real. But. You're sure you want to see the churches empty? You can't imagine a, a variety of churches, maybe by their lights, an extremely denatured church, a church um, which has ritual and loyalty and oh, common uh, cause uh, uh, and purpose. Uh, yeah, okay. but, and, and even and music. Sing, and, and music, yeah. and they sing yes. the songs, and yes. they do the rituals. Yes. Um, but where, where the irrationality has simply been long oh, out. OK. Yeah, so, so you go to those places for funerals and weddings, and, and, yes. and you have and beautiful also poetry and music. And also for, for um, uh, group solidarity. Group meetings. solidarity yeah. to create some project yeah. which is hard to get, yeah. get off the ground otherwise. So there's, I think there's one more tiny thing. I mean, I haven't been tempted to go to church since I was very, very 
small point, but I mean, if I, one reason that makes it very easy to keep me out of it is the, the use of the New English Bible instead of oh, the James Bible. Oh, yes. right. <laughs> I mean, there's really no point. I can't say where anyone goes yeah. and they can't see all people stay away. Yeah. They've yeah. thrown away a, 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 a pearl richer than all their tribe. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. They don't even know what they've got. It's yeah. terrible. If I, if I was a lapsed Catholic and I <laughs> brooded about how I wanted my funeral to be, which is not something I would... Well, I would want the Latin Mass. Yes. Absolutely. Well, but, I mean, sure, there's another sure. issue there, which, of course, yeah. is that as, as, when it becomes I want in, a proper intelligible... Tridentine, uh, yeah. when, when it becomes in, intelligible, the nonsense becomes more transparent. And, and so if it's in Latin, it can, it can survive much better. It's sort of it's rather like a camouflaged insect. It can get through the get through the barriers because you you, you can't see it. And, yeah, and whereas when it's translated into not just yeah, English yeah. but modern English, um, you can see it for what it is. But now, but now seriously, then, um, do you therefore delight in the fact that churches are modernizing their their? Texts and using no. the uh, no, or, I don't. Or do no, it, it's an aesthetic point. No, I don't. No, yeah. no, no, That's no. the worst of both no. worlds. That seems to yes. right. uh, yeah. and we should yeah. be grateful for it. We didn't do this to them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we didn't impose this on them any more than we. Yeah, so we weren't clever enough. Any, any more than we. Yeah, we, we don't blow up Shia mosques either. Yeah. Yeah. We don't blow up the Bamiyan Buddhas. Bamiyan Buddhas, exactly. We don't yeah. desecrate. We would. We would be. We would be for the reasons given by Sophocles and Antigone. We would have a natural. Resistance to profanity and desecration. We leave it to the pious to mm. destroy churches and burn synagogues or blow up each other's mosques. Um, and I think that's a point that we ought to, we might spend more time making, because I do think it is feared of us. This was my point to begin with that, mm. that we we wish for a, a world that's somehow empty of this echo of music and and poetry and the numinous and so forth. That we we would be happy in a in a brave new world. And uh, since right. I don't think it's true of yeah. any of us, no, yeah. it's not. We, we, no, might, we might, we might, it's a point one might spend a bit more time yeah. making that yeah. it, the howling wilderness of nothingness is, yeah. is much more likely to result from holy war right. or religious uh, conflict or theocracy than it is from yeah. a proper secularism, which would therefore, I think, have to not just allow or leave or tolerate or condescend to or patronize, but actually, in a sense, welcome um, the persistence of uh, something like faith. Hmm. What, well, I, I, I feel like putting better now than I, I did at the beginning. Intelligently, yeah. there. I think. What What do you mean? Something like faith? Yeah, yeah, and how like faith? Something like the belief that the the must be more than we can know. Well, that's, that's fine. That we, that Dan, we Dennis share. believes that. That's yeah, not faith. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we know there's there's more than we presently know. Well, and that was my original point in saying if we if we could if we could find a way of enforcing the distinction between the numinous and the superstitious, we yeah. would be doing something culturally quite important. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, no. it, it, when I'm told about this, well, Richard and I did this at Central Hall with uh, those with Scruton and that rather very that very weird team that we debated, mm -hmm. who kept on saying Scruton particularly, well, what about you know good old Gothic spires and so forth? I said, look, I wrote a book about the Parthenon. I'm intensely interested in it. Um, I think everyone should go. Everyone should study and so forth. But um, everyone should abstain from the cult of Pallas Athena. Mm. Everyone should realize that probably what that f sculptural frieze that's so beautiful describes may involve some human sacrifices. Um, Athenian imperialism wasn't all that pretty even under Pericles. So the, the great cultural project, in other words, may very well be to rescue what we have of <coughs> the art and aesthetic of, of religion while discarding the supernatural. A and I think acknowledging the evil that was part of its creation in the first place. Mm. That is, we can't condone the beliefs and practices of those Aztecs, but no. we can stand in awe of and want to preserve that, their, architecture. their architecture mm. and many other features of their mm. culture, but not <laughs> their practices and right. not their beliefs. I, I once did a British radio program where yeah. called Desert Island Disc, where you have to go on and choose your six records which you take to a desert island and, mm -hmm. and talk about it. And one of the ones I chose was Bach, Marke dich mein Herz herein. Oh, yeah. It's, it's wonderful, wonderful, Beautiful sacred uh, music. And the, the woman questioning me, couldn't understand why I would wish to have this piece of 
music. Pious. It is beautiful music, and its beauty is indeed enhanced by knowing what it means. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. it, it, yes. But, but it's, you still don't actually have to believe it. it it's like reading fiction. Exactly. You can, you can lose yourself in fiction mm. and be totally moved to tears by yeah. it. Yes. But, but nobody would ever say you've got to believe that this person existed and, mm. and that the yes. sadness that you feel yeah. uh, really yes. reflected something that actually happened. Yes, like the Bishop of Dublin who preached a sermon against Swift and said that he'd read every book of Gulliver's Travels and for his part he didn't believe a word of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So that's the yes. locus classicus, <laughs> I think, of all that. Well, clearly we're not cultural vandals, but maybe we should think of uh, the way in which so many people suspect that that's what we are. Hmm. Yes. If I would accept one criticism that these people make, or one suspicion that I suspect they harbor, or fear that they may have, I think that might be the one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That it would be all chromium and steel and um, yes, and very no much Christmas so. carols and no and, yes. and, and, and no menorahs. They, they no couldn't no. possibly anybody who makes that criticism couldn't mm. possibly have read any one of our books. No, no. Uh, um, well, that's another which, problem too. Which isn't another it? problem is that is the people that. Of course, this isn't just our books. It's so many books. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, people don't read them, they just read the reviews and then they decide that's what the book is. We're about to have the Christmas Wars again, of course, and um, this being the last day of September, um, yeah, you can feel it all coming on. But I always, whenever, whenever I, it comes up, when I go on any of these shows to discuss, I say it was Oliver Cromwell who cut down the Christmas trees and forbade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, was the, it was the Puritan Protestants, the ancestors yes. of, the, yeah. of the American it's fundamentalists the, said it's the Bami Christmas Buddhas would be again. blasphemy. Yeah. 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 Yes. Do, do at least respect your own traditions, because I do. Yes. I think yes. Cromwell was a great man in many, in many other ways as well. Right. This is actually a pagan festival. Well, we were all outed um, with our Christmas trees last yes, year. Yes, we yeah. had our... our did I have not the slightest problem yeah. with Christmas no, no, trees. No, 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 we had our Christmas card with our yeah. pictures it, of us. It's a good old Norse booze up. And, and why the hell not? Right. Well, but it's not just that. I mean, we I have like a, solstices as much as the next person. We, we have we have a an annual Christmas carol party where we sing the music and we and and all the music with all the words and, sure. and not not the secular and, and Christmas why stuff. Not? Yes. And it's just glorious stuff. Yeah. That part of the Christ, of the Christian story is fantastic. Yeah. It's just a beautiful tale, yeah. uh, 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 and you can love every. Inch of it. Mm. I, I, once, at, it. I once at lunch was next to the lady who was on uh, one of our opponent at that debate in London. Rabbi Neuberger. Rabbi, Rabbi Neuberger. <laughs> and she asked me whether I said grace in, in New College when I happened yes. to be a senior fellow. And I said, of course I say grace. It's a matter of simple courtesy. And she was furious. Oh, that, really? That I, yes. That I should, that I should um, somehow be so hypocritical as to, as to say Grace, and I had a, could only say, well, look, it may mean something to you, but it means absolutely nothing to me. This is this is a, a Latin formula, which which is, has some history, and I and I appreciate history. Freddie Eyre, the, the the philosopher, also used to say grace, and what uh -huh. he said was, I won't utter falsehoods, but I have no objection to uttering meaningless statements. Yes, that's good. the Wickham professor. Yes, the Wickham logic, professor. Yes. professor yes. Yeah. From a friend. Um, did we answer your question on Islam? Uh, I don't know. I think it's... Well, I got, I'll ask a related question. Do you feel there's any burden we have as critics of religion to be even-handed in our criticism of religion? Or is it fair to notice that there's a spectrum of religious ideas and commitments and Islam is on one end of it? and the Amish and the Jains and, and others are on another and, and there, there are real differences here that we have to take seriously. Well of course we have to take them seriously but we don't have to do the network balancing trick all the time. There are plenty of people taking care of pointing out the good stuff and the benign stuff and we can acknowledge that and then concentrate on the problems. That's what critics do. And, it, and again, it's, if we were uh, uh, writing books about the pharmaceutical industry, would we have to spend equal time on all the good they do? Or could we specialize in the problems and uh, I think it's very clear. Well, I think Sam's asking but more but about But we could it. criticize yeah. Merck if they were especially egregious as opposed to some other company. I mean, we, we, if we were focusing on the pharmaceutical industry, 
not all pharmaceutical businesses would be the would be culpable in the same yeah, way. Yeah, right. Well, and yeah. so then the question is, what the, sh should we? Is there something wrong with? No, you're, I think you're talking across purposes. No, I think, no, I think no. Sa Sa Sam's asking about whether we should be even-handed in criticizing the different religions. No, it, no, yeah, you're talking about even-handedness about good versus bad. And whether all religions yeah. are equally bad. Yes, right. so that whether, whether Islam yeah. is worse than yeah. Christianity. Or, or, or. It, it seems to me that we're, we, uh, we fail to enlist the, the friends we have on this subject when we... Mm -hmm balance this. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a tactic, it's, it's, a, it's a media tactic, and in some sense it's a, a um, almost an ontological commitment of atheism to say that all faith claims are in some sense equivalent. You know, the, the, the media says that Muslims have their extremists, and the, we have our extremists. We have jihadists yeah. in, in the Middle but East, and we have an imbalance you know, there. people there's who kill them, yeah. Yeah. abortion yeah. doctors. Yeah. And it's just not a, yeah. a, a real yeah. equation. I mean, yeah. the, the right. mayhem that's going on under, under the aegis of Islam is just cannot be compared to the fact that we have, you know, two people who a decade kill abortionists. Um, and, and so I think we, uh, my commitment, I mean, this is one of the problems I have with the concept of atheism, is I just think it, it, it hobbles us in this discourse where we have to seem to kind of spread the the, the light of criticism equally in all directions at all yeah. moments, and 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 f and I think we could, uh, on any specific question, have a majority of, of religious people agree with us. I mean, <laughs> a majority of people in this country, yeah. in the United States, clearly agree that the doctrine of martyrdom in Islam is appalling and not benign and liable to get a lot of people killed and worthy of criticism. Um, likewise, the doctrine that souls live in petri dishes. Uh, even Christians, even 70% of Americans, <laughs> don't want to believe that in light of the promise of stem cell research. Uh, so it seems to me w once we focus on particulars, we, uh, we have you know, a real strength of numbers, and yet when we stand back yeah. from the ramparts of atheism and say, it's all bogus, we lose 90% of our neighbors. Well, that's, I'm sure that's, that, that's yeah. right. On the other hand, um, my, my concern is, is actually not so much with the with the evils of religion as whether it's true. Yeah, and yeah. I, I really do, I mean, I pa care passionately about that the, the fact of the matter, is there as a matter of fact a, a supernatural creator in this universe? And I, and I really care about that. Yeah. And so, although I also care about the evils of, of religion, I, I'm, I'm prepared to be even-handed because they all make this, yeah. this uh, claim, which seems to me Upfront, equally, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, would, hmm. I would never give up the, the claim that all religions are equally false. And for that reason, because they, they're forced by preferring faith to reason, latently at least, equally dangerous. But mm. e equally false, but, but surely not quite equally dangerous because of... No, latently, I think so. Because latently, the, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. of the surrender of the mind. Yeah. Uh, the surrender of the mind, yeah. the, 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 the eagerness to discard the only thing that we've got that makes us higher primates, the faculty of reason. That's always yes. deadly. And always, and uh, if, if, I'm not under, sure. Yeah, I, I think the, it's the, potentially the Amish yeah. can't. The Amish yeah. can't hurt me, but they can sure they hurt, hurt the their, people who live in their community. Yeah. They have a little totalitarian, but not quite in the system. same way. The, the Dalai Lama claims to be a god king of, of a hereditary monarchy, and inherited godliness. That's the most repulsive possible idea, and he runs a crummy little dictatorship in Dharamsala. Right. And would, it would be worse, and, and praises the Indian nuclear test, it would be worse. It, it's only limited by his own limited scope. But if you added the, the, the same evil jihad to that, you'd be more concerned. Mm. Well, look, every time I've ever debated with Islamists, they've all said, ah, you've just offended a billion Muslims, as if they spoke for them. Right. As if mm. and there's a definite threat to this uh, a menace, a military tone to what they say. In other words, if they'd said, you've just offended me as a Muslim, it doesn't sound quite the same, does it? If, the, if they were the only one who believed in the Prophet Muhammad. Mm. No, no, it's a billion. Um, and by the way, what's in, implied in that is watch out. Right. Yeah. I don't care. If, if there was only one person who believed that the Prophet Muhammad had been given dictation by the Archangel Gabriel, I'd still say what I was saying. Right, but you wouldn't lay away. And it would I... be just as dangerous that they believed that, yes. It would, because it could spread. The belief could become well, more but general. It, it has, in the case of Islam, it has spread. 
and is spreading. And, that, and so it's, it's, its danger is not only potential, but, but actual. Yeah. I, I, so I can see no yeah. contradiction. Yes, but over, space and, like over space and time, the oil, I think, is tremendously evens out. I mean, I didn't expect, I'm sure neither did you, in the 60s, that there would be such a threat from Jewish fundamentalism. Hmm. Uh, relatively small right. numbers, but in a very important place, a strategic place, and mm. deciding to try and bring on the Messiah by stealing other people's land and and uh, br trying to bring on the end. Yeah, it's yeah. A very and numerically it's extremely small. Right, but the the consequences that it's had have been absolutely calamitous. Uh, and we, we didn't used to think actually of Judaism as a threat in that way at all yeah. until the Zionist movement annexed the Messianic or fused with it because the mass Zionists didn't used to be Zionists, as you know, so you'd never know when it's going to be next. I, well, that, I, that I, I agree, I'm not likely to be, to have my throat cut at the supermarket by a Quaker. Yes. <laughs> but the Quakers do a lot of the work by saying we preach non-resistance to evil. Right. Well, that's as wicked a position as you could possibly hold. Given the right context. I mean, what could be more revolting than that? Yeah. Say, you see evil and violence and cruelty and you don't fight it. Yeah, they're free riders. Yeah. Okay. Read Franklin on what the, what the Quakers were like at the crucial moment in Philadelphia when there had to be a battle over freedom and see, that, uh, see why people despised them. Hmm. Uh, I would have then said the Quakerism was actually quite a serious danger to the United States. So it's a, it's a, it's a matter of space and time. But no, they're all, they're all equally rotten, false, dishonest, corrupt, humorless, and dangerous. Hmm. It's true. Instance. I mean, there's one point you make here that, that I think we should say a little more about is that you never, you almost can never quite anticipate the danger of unreason. I mean, when your mode of interacting with, with others and the universe mm -hmm. is to affirm truths you're in no position to affirm, the, the liabilities of that are potentially infinite. I mean, you just don't know. So to take a, a case that, uh, that I raised a moment ago, stem cell research, you don't know going in that the, the idea that the soul enters the, the zygote at the moment of conception is a terrible idea. I mean, it seems a totally benign idea until you invent something like stem cell research where it stands in the way of, of incredibly promising, life-saving research. Um, and so it's, I mean, there's something about dogmatism which, which you can mm -hmm. almost never foresee how many lives it's going to cost uh, because, the, you know, it's conflict with reality just, you know, erupts. In, well, that's why I think of the, the, the moment where everything went wrong, is the moment when um, the Jewish Hellenists were defeated by the Jewish Messiah, the, the celebration now benignly known as Hanukkah, so as right. it can not crash, crash with Christmas. That's where the human race took its worst turn. There's a few people that they reestablished the animal sacrifices, the circumcision, and the cult of Yahweh over Hellenism and philosophy, and Christianity is a plagiarism of that. Wouldn't, Christianity would never have happened, and nor would Islam. Right. There were, no doubt there would have been other crazed cults and so forth, but there might have been a chance to, to not destroy Hellenistic civilization. Well, it's not a matter of numbers. You'd still it's a matter of, Lama if I may, if I may say so, memes and uh, infections, which was spread very fast. Of course, I would have certainly said in the 1930s that the Catholic Church was the most uh, deadly organization because of its alliance with fascism, mm. which was explicit and open. Um, and sordid, uh, much the most dangerous church, but I, I would not, not now say that the Pope is the most dangerous of the religious uh, authorities. And it's uh, no question that Islam is the most dangerous religion, and partly because it doesn't have a papacy it, that yes, can indeed, tell yeah. it to stop right. something yeah. and There's make no it need it. Saying, control, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, by, all me by all means, yes, but I would still have to say that Judaism is the root of the problem. Although it's only the root of the problem in light of the Muslim fixation on that land. If, if the Muslims didn't care about Palestine, we could have the settlers trying to usher in the Messiah all they want. It would, it would, there'd be no issue. It's only the conflict of claims on that real estate. Um, this, this is just to say that... that, that well, both sides are, have been both, both sides are, are at fault, but the only reason why 200,000 settlers could potentially precipitate a global conflict is because there are a billion people who really care whether those settlers tear down the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, Which it's their dream to do. Yeah. Because yeah. they have the belief that one, per one part of the globe is holier than another. Right. Than which no belief could be more insane or irrational 
or indecent. And so just a few of them holding that view and having the power to make, make it real is enough to uh, risk a civilizational conflict which civilization could lose. I mean, I think we'll be very lucky if we get through this conflict without a nuclear exchange. Actually, so that's, I think that's a very good topic. What, what are... <clears throat> What are, our ex what are our most grandiose hopes and fears here? I mean, what do you think reasonably could be accomplished in the lifetime of, of our children? Uh, what do you think the stakes actually are? Uh, and, and how would you and get maybe, there? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and is there something we can engineer apart from just mere criticism? I mean, are there some, like practical steps? I mean, what, what with a billion dollars could we do to affect some significant change of, of ideas? Is well, there any practical? I, I feel myself on the losing side politically and on the winning side intellectually. Hmm. I mean, you, in that's the, just, you, you, don't see, you don't see anything to do. In the current zeitgeist, I don't think we would be accused of uh, undue conceit if we said of ourselves or didn't mind it being said of us that we've been opening and carrying forward and largely winning an argument that's been neglected for too long. I mean, that, I mean, that, certainly in the United States and Britain at this moment, that's true, it seems to me. But in global terms, I think we're absolutely in a tiny, dwindling minority that's going to be defeated by the forces of theocracy. I which don't will probably you're betting against which, us. No, I, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think they're going to end up by destroying civilization. Hmm. I've long thought yeah. so. Well, of course, you may be right, but not because, without a struggle. Because it, because it, because it can be a, it can be a single catastrophe. Because that's my big but disagreement with Professor Dawkins is that uh, mm -hmm. I think it's us plus the 82nd Airborne and the 101st, who are the real fighters for secularism at the moment, uh, the ones who are uh, really fighting the main enemy. So, in what sense and do you disagree? And, on that? and I think I probably among secularists that must be considered the most eccentric position you could possibly hold. That's a tooth fairy belief among most people. That I believe it to be an absolute fact. He's only because of the willingness of the United States to to combat and confront theocracy that we have a chance of beating it. Oh, Our so arguments are right. absolutely of no relevance in that. No, I. I oh, you, you I may have many I, more takers, although not yeah. on, on the territory of Iraq. I mean, it may be yeah. that we need the 82nd Airborne to fight the, a different war in a different place. Yeah for the same purpose, yeah. for, um, for the stated purpose. So. Voila, by all means there are uh, reservations to be expressed by me which right. I happily give you, but yeah. it, in, in principle I think that's it's a very important recognition. Unfortunately yeah. we're, we're running out of time. Huh? Um, and possibly tape. <laughs> uh, I think we've had a wonderful discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah great. And yeah. Thank you. Got a lot to think about. Very much. Yeah. Yeah.